Hey YouTube, welcome to a brand new episode of Comics and Stuff. My name is Devin and I am your host as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is the new setup. It's not done yet as you can see. I just have a few pictures up. I'm going to be getting some shelves to do some Funkos, maybe get a comic more hung up. I got one, so hey, working on it. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving with their families, and uh, sorry this was like a week late, but there was some logistical stuff I needed to figure out. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, I don't think the setup is going to be as awesome as it was at the old place, because, um, you know, no longer at a bachelor pad, so, you know, but that's okay. Um, you know, I hope you guys enjoy everything still. I mean, you know, we're coming up on Star Wars, so Star Wars is coming up in like two weeks or something like that. I am, I am so excited. Or next week. Holy cow. Next week, next Friday. Be ready. Any case, um, today's video is going to be on, uh, it's, it's a brief history of EC Comics. I, I remember like a couple weeks ago I mentioned that I said, uh, oh, I should have posted that already, and lo and behold, I didn't. So here's my video uh, titled A Brief History of EC Comics. So I hope you guys uh, really enjoy it. I had a blast uh, taking notes on it, so I have all my notes here, and we're just going to kind of go through the motions, all right? So... Uh, let's start out in the 1940s. So EC Comics was founded uh, by Maxwell Gaines, who was the former editor of All American Publications. Um, he opened uh, EC in 1944 after DC slash National Comics absorbed All American Comics. For those of you who don't know, All American Comics number 12, I believe, was the first appearance of the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. So there's that. Uh, initially, EC set out to make comics about like uh, science and and encouraging church stories. Uh, you know, they they were well known for their picture stories from the Bible uh, series, which you can still find some around, um, kind of laying around like flea markets and stuff. Um, and then, actually, uh, this is the unfortunate part. So, in 1947, three years after Maxwell Gaines uh, opened up EC Comics, he actually died. In a boating accident, so he left the son or the uh, company to his son William, and so that's where Bill Gaines, William Gaines, comes from. If you guys know that name, you should. It's, it's a big name in the comic book industry. So uh, he left the entire company to his son when he died in the boating accident. And in 1950, uh, Bill Gaines takes the company in a totally new direction. Um, he opens a new line of like horror, suspense, sci-fi, military, and crime stories. Um, this included EC's most successful titles, so Tales from the Crypt and um, Haunt of Fear and Vault of Horror. So if those names don't stand out to you, you should, uh, you should do your research. Anyways, I digress. Um, so EC Comics also became, in the 1950s, a, uh, an early pioneer in um, the letters to the editor, uh, as well as uh, they also had one of the first comic book fan clubs ever. It was called uh, the EC Fan Addict Club, or Fanatic, Fanatic, get it, haha. Um, so that was cool. Uh, in an effort to combat public outcry uh, and criticism towards comics, a lot of it w which was spearheaded by um, you know the uh, seduction of the innocent and Frederick Wortham, um, Gaines and his fellow publishers, with the intention to fight back, this is actually kind of weird. So with the intention to fight back against censorship, uh, Gaines gathered his fellow editors to kind of come up with a plan. But the uh, other, for this though, the, the other publishers, they, they founded the Comics Code Authority, which is not what Gaines intended. So uh, it's a little crazy how he came together to not do censorship and then they ended up censoring themselves so that's not what he what he wanted to and he fought against the comics code authority he didn't want to censor any of his stuff so due to the comics code authority ec's sales actually plummeted uh because he refused to submit and retailers refused to carry books that didn't carry the code of the comic seal authority except for uh dell and gold key but uh so Gaines ended up he ended up actually canceling in the 50s his most of his titles uh you know he he tried to re reboot kind of uh, his all of his books so he had the uh he launched a line of comics called uh the new direction line of comics uh which bore the seal of the comics code authority but uh all line, all of the lines are canceled unfortunately by the fifth issue so uh incredible science fiction number 33 was the last comic book published by EC Comics, and it's also uh, one of um, EC's like largest controversies um, because they it featured a uh, black astronaut uh, when he 
I guess the story goes, it's a black astronaut or African-American astronaut, and he comes across a planet full of blue robots and orange robots. And they were experiencing a lot of the same troubles that back in the 50s and 60s, African-Americans and white people were dealing with. Um, so it was, it was a really big controversy because back then it, you know, it was a, I mean, it still is a big deal, but it was a big deal back then as well. Um, and people were less forward thinking back then. So that was a thing. Um, now fast forward. So the, the final thing is uh, Mad. So Mad Magazines. Uh, so it was originally just Mad, which was published by EC. It actually becomes Mad Magazine. Uh, so it could avoid the Comics Code Authority and EC Comics canceled all of its other titles uh, by 1956. So Mad Magazine originally was a comic book format, but uh, to avoid and just not even deal with Comics Code Authority, it became a magazine. Now, um, EC Comics in the 1960s was uh, sold to a company that was later absorbed by DC Comics and Warner Brothers. Uh, the 60s was relatively quiet, so you just move right into the 70s. Um, that's when Tales from the Crypt, uh, the, it gets a movie adaption in 1972, and The Vault of Horror gets a movie adaption in 1973. And then... Um, Fast forward to the 1980s, and that cult classic TV show that we all know and love, Tales from the Crypt series, uh, belong or begins, and it inspired a huge cult following from kids in the 80s, and still kids today. I mean, if you, yeah, the cult, it was great. Tales from the Crypt, you need to watch it. In, in any case, um, after it, that show actually lasted 93 episodes, so that was a long time. It ended in the 1990s, and then um, from the 1990s all the way up till 2012, I think. I mean. EC had just all but disappeared from from everything. Uh, but in 2012, Fantagraphic Books, which is based here in Seattle, Washington, began to reprint all of the EC Comics stories uh, in by order of artists. So as of 2016, last year, uh, 17 books from EC Comics have been published. So that is, that is the absolute entirety of the history of uh, EC Comics. Um, yeah, that's really it. So, you know, if you guys like this video, uh, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Um, tell me what you think of this new setup. Tell me what you think I can add to it. And um, I will catch you guys next week before I head out to go see Star Wars. So uh, I hope you guys are just as stoked as I am. I hope that this was a uh, educational video for you guys. And I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.